All righty. All righty. Let me uh, mic test. Okay, it's just really, really quiet. Okay, guys, I see. I see. I got a little curl, curl hanging out here. I'm gonna leave it. I don't even care. I don't even care. I'm just, I'm just rolling with it. So uh, what are, what are we doing? We we learned about blockchain and cryptography on the last one. Total side note: this is this is why we're learning this stuff. I want to show an encryption layer just to impress upon you, I suppose, how cool cryptography is or how cool encrypting stuff is. So I'm encrypting all this user's data, and you can see I can try to match my environment environment variable, and I can't read the data unless I copy down the secret key. It's the correct key, and then I can finally see this user's data, the IP address, the device they logged in on, all the fun stuff. So yeah, but if but if I don't have the correct environment key, you can see all the all the stuff I've set it up to be encrypted. So cool stuff. And here's here's kind of what it looks like on a full. Well, by the way, this is sentiment. So this is our our project we're building, and it's awesome. So and and here's just all the all the users' data that we have. We're up to I think 18 users now. It's it's kind of picking up some speed. We we like we're like pre-production, but we are cooking. We've got. Our CEO, we've got our COO, we got our CTO, and then also our director, and we um, and a few other things: a, a business advisor and a uh, or executive business advisor, and a few other things. And, and I'm just sharing it because I'm I'm quite literally hands on in the process of building a company. And and the things I'm learning right now, I almost want to document it with you guys, like with shorts, with like the skill sets I'm learning, because it, it goes beyond just. Uh, engineering stuff too so so it's super fun but this is like the the real use case of learning encryption methods is like look at all this user's data maybe we don't want people to access certain wallets and certain things like this and you can actually only access the correct data according to the key the environment key that you have so it's pretty cheeky system folks pretty cheeky right so I love cryptography. I'm learning more and more about it every day. Let's get back to the basics here. And that's what we're doing here on this series with the EVM. And again, the reason is, is because when when we're building stuff like that, that we just, I've got a monitor over here, so that's why I'm pointing over here and it's pulled up over there. But when we're building stuff like that, when we're stacking layers of, of concepts on each other, you, you really just want the fundamental building blocks. And if you know the fundamental building blocks, you could you could go quite a ways. You like it's it's really the number one thing that I think has made me any any bit good of an engineer. If if I were to consider myself a decent engineer, but while the average, dare I say, dare I say, but even beyond engineering, whether it was like with music or sports or something, it's it's like literally the fundamentals. Like you ha like hash out pun intended the fundamentals, and you're you're good. So I'm gonna be really bad and embarrass myself here. Let's do it together. <laughs> Let's do it together. So cryptog cryptographic hash functions like the SHA-256 are one-way functions. This means that if you have an input, it's relatively trivial to find the output. <clears throat> On the other hand, if you have the output, it's infeasible to find the input. So it's, it's a one-way hash. So we have an input and then an output. So the input goes through the function. We get it, we get a scrambled output. Even if we put this output back through the input, nothing's going to, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's, it's going to just hash it even more. So you can't go upstream, upstream in that data flow. You can only go one way, which is really cool. So, okay. So however, if you knew that hashes are, are, however, if you knew some of the hashes of the common inputs, then you could brute force guess at the output or create a rainbow table to determine that what the input is. It's easy to find that the SHA-256 hash of apples is this uh, hash number here. If this was a likely input, a hacker could search for it specifically and know what the input was, apples. So for security purposes, they, they have something, it's important to remember to use a random salt, which you can add to your input to make it unguessable via methods mentioned above. So if you have a hashing function, right? And let's let's get out of technical terms, because sometimes when you say these, these big words of like salt, hashing, and encryption, it, it, it like hurts your brain. You're, you're like, what is all this stuff? But let's say we have a function and its job is just to scrattle, scramble letters, right? And it scrambles letters the same way every time. We can then build our own quote unquote key or legend because I can scramble the word and then I can get the same hash of it. And then I could stick it on a table and say, okay, that's the dictionary word for the. So any hash bytes that look like that, I now know it's the word the. And then if I want to do apples, I could put apples through this hash function. 
I would get the same uh, hash and then I could take that, put it in my dictionary of hashes and say, okay, if I ever get this hash, it's the word apples. So all of a sudden you do that a thousand times, you could actually decrypt some pretty complex hashes. So that's where you add in a random salt. So now you get the word apple appended with a whole bunch of random other things. And those random other things then get hashed together. And maybe maybe that that random other thing could be like timestamp, for instance. So the timestamp in this very second, boom, is different from the timestamp in this very second and the next very second and an hour from now. So the timestamp is always going to be changing. So uh, that's an example of what you could do for assault. Uh, don't recommend it because, uh, you know, there's there's other ways to do IVs, initialization vectors or salt um, that are a little bit more robust than that. So, but but you can see the idea behind it. So you pick a bunch of random letters with a key and then you can hash those two things together and then boom, you can now get a really secure hash. So, okay, let's let's keep moving forward. <clears throat> So our goal is to find the color. So here's our colors. And by the way, that rainbow table, that's that's what that dictionary thing is. So let's separate the colors we're searching for from the rainbow table. I know that we're learning about colors or, or we're going to hash some colors. And then with the rainbow table, there's separate things. The rainbow ta table was just that dictionary, that metaphorical dictionary, I said, of of encryptions. So if we encrypted the word the, had you know a hash of this, of 0x123, we know that's the... If we put apples through the encryption thing and it was 0x124, we know that 0x124 equals apples. So the rainbow chart is just that, a, co a combination, a dictionary of hashes, if you want to think of it that way, like a book of hashes, a legend of hashes, a chart, a rainbow chart of hashes. Okay, so here's, here's an exact uh, thing of rainbow table here. So, okay, so your goal, given a SHA-256 hash, find the color input that would generate that hash. You can assume that all hashes that all the hashes be generated only from colors provided in the colors array to take the hash of a color first use the utf2 bytes to translate the string into bytes then use sha256 to hash it so let's do our best here i have done this before but honestly i, I don't fully recall so let's see so find color maybe we can console log the hash real quick just to see what we're dealing with <clears throat> and enter to run the code so we're getting all these bytes here and we need to map these bytes, I believe. So map the color. So color equals this. And then we would say color, I believe UTF to bytes. So we, we just want to, if, if I remember correctly, we, we actually want to find the specific bytes. So <clears throat> hashes are, let's see. UTF to bytes, I think maybe I invoke it like this, but but the byte code is super important. I think I think we store byte code because it's actually lighter weight than than strings and things like that. I'm not fully sure, but I think integers are lighter weight from a data storage standpoint than anything else. So so I think that's why smart contracts use byte code. But let's let's try to figure this out real quick. So I, I just I just want to convert all of these to a byte code. So I'm I'm just gonna even try to get one real quick. So this to UTF bytes. Let's see if this will work and at least give us something. So is it is it the other way? Do I go this in the UTF bytes thing like this? Is that how we get the bytes? Oh, that is. Okay, so that does give us byte code right here. So you went array, boom. Okay, awesome. So that is this. So then we use SHA-256 to hash it. And I believe I can say we have the SHA-256 right here. Let's try that one more time. Nice. We're getting somewhere, folks. We're getting somewhere. So that actually is the first one, just, just from console log standpoint, but it won't be the same for the second one because we're, we're getting the byte code for red. Okay, so so kind of ignore all this. Like, it, it, it seems like a lot. My brain hurts even looking at it, but, but basically we have a string right here of red, and we're, we're taking that string and, and converting it to numbers, like byte code of, of what it would be, or like binaries to some degree. And then we're then taking those that converted bytecode and then we're hashing it. We're then going through a hashing algorithm. So let's see what the UTF to bytes, it still should be this. So we have all the bytes right here. Boom, 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 boom. So this bottom array, this is this is the one we're console logging. And the top array is the one that the the test is giving us. So okay, so let's uh, let's see. So we have the hash right here. Let me remove that. We don't really need that anymore because we now have, I think, the correct deal. So colors, 
map to the color, I believe. Mm. Or do I want to find? I think I want to find the color. So to hash the color, boom, boom, boom. We need to find the color of the input that would generate this. Ha so I think I just need to do all of this, but flip, flip, flip my thinking real quick. So, so this was just with one color. So then we need to say colors dot map into this basically or colors dot find into this. So I'll say uh, color and then we'll hash and transfer or change the bytes into that. So let's try that. Let's see if that works. I believe that's what the answer is. Let's see. Let's see. UTF bytes X end of thing. No. Okay. So we're trying to find the one that equals that. Got it. Okay. So maybe that's what we want to do is say this equals this, right? Maybe I was feeling it on that. I was feeling it. So, so we're, so this is the, the hash, correct? Right. So that's the hash. That's, that's what's getting passed in. And then this is actually what we're looking for, right? So console log, boom, this color, let me comment that out real quick. Say so here, and we should see both a match, right? Roughly. Oh, I think I'm missing a parenthesis, maybe potentially. Nice. Okay. So uh, colors not defined. So if I say red, let's just define a color for ourselves. I thought, I thought that would work. Yeah. We, so mapping over the colors array does not work. So if I say colors dot map, and I could say color, right? Pass in the color equal to the hash. What about this? I'm pretty sure that's the answer though. Pretty sure. So I am going to, oh, let me get rid of this. No. Okay, let's try this. And then if not, I'll just, I'll just see the answers. I'm not trying to spend too much time with it, but I, I'm pretty sure that's the right concept is basically we want to take the color, the individual color and check the one that's equal to the hash, but I'm, I'm unsure. Maybe we need to do this with the hash as well. Perhaps that's why. I'll give this as the last go, and then if not, we'll keep it moving. Let's see. No. Okay. All right. It's time, time to throw the towel in. Throw the towel in. All right. So return colors, boom, to hex. That's what we needed. We needed the to hex bit. Yep. Yep. Yep, folks. It's official. It's official. It's official. Still learning. Still doing the thing. You know, every time, every time I'm like, I learned it all. I swear I learned it all. Didn't. Didn't, didn't even do it. Didn't even do it. Okay. So I think, I think we needed this bit of uh, this one was all good, I believe. So we just need to say two hex here, right? Something like that. Okay. Now what's going on this, this is where it gets a little bit frustrating. So we have colors dot find X. So two hex. So we just said color. That's fine. UTF bytes shot 256 equals yeah I don't see a difference to be honest colors dot da 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 the bytes the color interesting what the heck what the heck what did I break what did I break because now it's not even hey all right we we are moving forward we are moving forward doing the old copper ruse two hex shot 256 to bytes not sure why it didn't go through for us but but concept is there basically we want to take the byte code of the colors the hashing algorithm of that byte code and then the hex version of it as well the, the hexadecimal of that byte code so okay let's move on so public key crypto cryptography maybe maybe i'll wrap it up here because I, I know i kind of want to break them up as learning a lesson and then and then coding learning a lesson coding as best as we can i don't i think i think that's an appropriate thing to do so just the first bit though is is understanding a bit of that stuff right of why we're doing cryptographic this this is going to be a tongue twister every time <laughs> cryptographic hashing cryptography cryptography you know what I mean? Which, which is it cryptography? I feel like it's cryptography. It's gotta be, it's gotta be cryptography. But okay, so this is what we're doing, right? We're just, bytecode gets stored on the smart contract and that's like our base, like every smart contract gets compiled down to bytecode. That's the biggest thing. Let's, let's verify this, right? Smart contracts, bytecode, right? Uh, machine readable, um, which should the EVM 
that's used to execute the smart contracts. So solidity is an abstract, it's an abstraction above that, right? So so solidity is up here, the bytecode's down here. So solidity, when it gets compiled into a smart contract on the EVM, it gets stashed as bytecode. I have my hunches that it's because bytes, binaries are are the lightest weight, like integers are the lightest weight pieces of data compared to like strings and booleans and stuff like that. I don't, that's a suspicion of mine. I'll have to verify that, but that's that's probably what's going on here is is it's getting transpiled into bytecode and then that bytecode is as lightweight as it could possibly be to let us know what's on the smart contract that's fundamentally evm stuff i will see you on the next one it's going to be a good one folks we're here for the journey the curls are out the curls are out we're here for the long run i will see you soon